Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you as always by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I hope you are having a wonderful week so far. I have another author interview for you today, a returning author, which is always so much fun for me to talk to someone that I've spoken with before. This time I'm speaking with Laura Heffernan, who is the author of the Reality Star series, and there are three books in that in that series. The third one comes out today. It's called Reality Wedding. When Laura was on earlier, she talked about the first two books in that series. And now she is talking about the final book in the trilogy, as I said, Reality Wedding. And Laura says that this one is her favorite of the three. And I would have to agree with her. They're all really fun and I loved them all. But I love what I love most about this one is that even though the main characters, Justin and Jen, are back on a reality show and they're going through all of the craziness that they went through on the first two, in, during the first two books, they are able to be more of a team this time. And I don't want to give anything away really, but they're able to work together in ways that they weren't able to work together and be a team in the first two books, which if you've read, you know that the producers who try to create as much drama as possible to make it, you know, more, um, more entertaining, more ratings grabbing, what have you, they did things in the first two books to put obstacles in the way of Justin and Jen. And they tried to get them to, um, not trust one another or uh, have disagreements, whatever. And so in this one, they really get to work together more as a team, more as a cohesive unit. And I liked that a lot. I really appreciated it. It is funny. It is smart. It is um, snarky in a good way because it, you know, it kind of puts these characters into these hilarious, weird situations that reality TV so often does. But let me give you the description of the book. And that is as follows. When Jen Reed escaped a reality TV cruise with her relationship intact, if not her hair, she swore she was done with the cameras for good. Sure, she and Justin met, had their first kiss, and got engaged with tape rolling. But manufactured drama and ruthless producers have shaken them up more times than she can count. With Jen's reality-themed bakery just getting started and her brand new lawyer fiancé in a pile of debt, they're a long way from glitz and glamour. And that's fine by Jen, until the network calls and tells her that unless she says, I do, to a wedding special, Justin will be out of a job. Now Jen has two weeks to plan an all-expense-paid dream wedding and dodge the tricks and traps of a showrunner happy to mess up her future in the name of ratings. Luckily for Jen, she's got plenty of experience with cake and popcorn. But when real-life drama and reality TV twists collide, the cliffhangers may just follow her right down the aisle. So that is the description of Reality Wedding by Laura Heffernan. And you get, you know, the idea that that there's going to be lots of twists and turns, lots of comedy, lots of uh, dramedy, if you will. And you see why they are back on reality TV, because when I first started reading the book and the producers called to say, hey, how would you like to get married on TV? I was I was thinking, no, 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 no. You guys said you would never do this again. Don't do it. Uh, Not that characters in books ever listen to me. But then you find out, as the description says, that Justin will be out of a job and I'll let you read those details for yourself. But at least there is that reason for why they decide to go on and not just kind of, oh, hey, let's um, 
we're gluttons for punishment. Let's do this again. It was so much fun the first two times. So there's, as I said, some twists and turns. There's some great um, plot developments that happen, some things that you may or may not see coming. And then there's a great twist at the end that I loved. So I was so happy that Laura was able to keep that in the book. And I am going to now let her talk about this book, Reality Wedding. And so here is my interview with author Laura Heffernan. Laura, welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me again. I had a lot of fun last time. I did too. It's wonderful to talk to you again. So for listeners who maybe didn't hear our first interview, if you could just introduce yourself. My name is Laura Heffernan. I'm the author of the Reality Star series. There's three books currently. The third one uh, comes out on March 6th. That's Reality Wedding. And uh, that is that's our conclusion. It's got... Uh, after three books, Jen and Justin are getting married, and they um, they get a call asking them to get married on TV, which sounds great. All expenses paid. Who wouldn't want that? Um, but they're not sure because, you know, they've had some ups and, ups and downs with reality TV over the years. Um, the network essentially blackmails them into doing the show. So they have to deal with the real-life twists and turns along with the reality TV drama. Yes, and... Um, it- I mean, obviously, it's called reality wedding, so you know that they are going to end up getting married on TV, but or that's that's going to be the premise. But at the beginning, when they get the call from the producers, I, the characters just never listen to me in books. I'm I'm saying, don't do it. But <laughs> well, you know that they're engaged because it's called reality wedding, and, right? And there's a woman on the front with a wedding dress. That's really all you know going in, right? So, how was writing this last book? Was it any different from writing the first two? knowing that it was the conclusion? It was sadder writing it, knowing it was the conclusion. Um, Because the first, you know, you write the first book and you're so excited. And, you know, hey, I'm writing. Like, that was my first book, the first manuscript that I finished. So there's this whole, hey, I'm writing a book. This is so cool. You always talk about it. I'm finally doing it. So I've got that the whole time. And then when you write the second one, it's like, I got a book deal. Yay, they want to read more of the series. That's so exciting. And I get to the third one, and I'm like, I love these characters so much, but, well, this is it. (laughs) It it is a little bittersweet. It's exciting. I'm glad that I got the opportunity to write three books. This one is actually my favorite of the three. But there is a bit of, oh, I don't get to hang out with them anymore. Yeah. So is it it definitely the end for this series, or would, would you consider going back to this world at all? I would consider going back to the world at some point. I had a couple of ideas for spinoffs. Like, I thought about doing just, like, a short, like, a series of short stories or novellas where they're actually, where Jen and Justin watch the shows they're on together. Because I did that with my best friend after she was on her reality show. And it's it's an interesting experience. It's kind of fun. But it, that wouldn't be a full-length book. Um, I, I had an idea for a novella, maybe with Danielle from Sweet Reality, because I really liked her. But nothing set in stone right now. Okay. Because I, I kept thinking that there would be, you know, uh, that the producers are, would, of course, want them to get pregnant and then have, you know, a, like the tabloids always say, Justin and Jen's baby joy. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on forever. I mean, you could. There's, there's so many reality shows I could put them on. But I also hit a point where I got kind of tired of just throwing crap at these poor people. Yes. And I feel like they need a break from me. I, yes. Yeah. And at, at that point, I mean, you, you can understand why they agreed to be on um, another reality show. But after that point, you, then as a reader, you, you, I would definitely be thinking, come on, you two. Let's, <laughs> why are you putting yourself through this? They need a pretty good reason. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so there are... It's a reality show, and uh, you know, as reality shows go, there's always crazy things that happen and drama that tends to be um, created. So, do you just let yourself kind of be evil when you're creating the the, the plots or, or the the um, the drama that the producers come up with for the characters? I really kind of do. I mean, I've seen so many reality shows, and I'm a huge fan of Unreal, and so I just kind of sitting back thinking what would I do to make this show a little more evil if it were my show? And you just kind of, you just let your mind go. And I had a lot of, a lot of ideas. Um, Not everything makes it in, but you just, you have to let go of being nice to the characters and really turn it up. 
Pardon the interruption, but we do have to take our first break of the podcast. I don't know if you are someone who watches reality TV or not. I watch some here and there, but I'm not um, a huge, rabid fan of it. I, I just... Sometimes I, I can't, I feel so uncomfortable with the situations that the people on the reality TV series find themselves in. And so it's, it's more fun to read about it, knowing that the characters are fictional and not, and not people that are actually going through these experiences and knowing that the, the producers or the showrunner or whomever is, you know, twisting some things or manipulating things to make things more dramatic. I, I I know I couldn't be on a reality TV show, and I don't think I could be the person that had to make those decisions. Maybe I could do the writing like Laura did. I could I could create my Machiavellian plans through writing, but I don't think I could do it in real life. Anyway, when we come back, we'll be talking more about reality TV and the book Reality Wedding. So stay tuned. You are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and we will be right back with our interview with Laura Heffernan. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Laura Heffernan about the conclusion to her reality star series, Reality Wedding. Do you, um, do you think that you would ever want to be a reality TV producer or, or do you prefer to just do the do your um, do your evil schemes to your, your made up characters? <laughs> It's a really interesting question because I never really thought about it. <laughs> I've thought about whether I'd want to go on a reality show. And at this point, I know enough that I think the answer is probably not. Mm-hmm. Although I would love to be a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race anytime they want me. I'm there. But um, being a producer, I don't know, it could be fun. But at the same time, I've seen enough Unreal to think I might not have it in me to be as devious as what would be necessary. Right, right. I mean, uh, doing these things to to fictional characters is one thing. I'm not sure I could actually go through with doing these, th- you know, creating these schemes with real people. And I do generally make it up to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yes. Most of them. <laughs> yes, which is very kind of you. Um, and you, you might not be able to do that in real life. So there is a plot twist at the end, which we are not going to give away, but did you, were you always working toward that plot twist or did it evolve as you were writing? That was always the ending that I wanted. I didn't know if my editor was going to go for it. So I had in the back of my mind some other options, but from early on when I knew that I was going to get to write a book about these characters, that's what I wanted to happen. And, um, we can't talk about the plot twist. I'm trying to think of. <laughs> There's many twists and turns. It's, yes. Uh, I try to keep things interesting for the reader. Yes. Yes. There are definitely many twists. And, and I don't want to give anything away, but you know, all of my, all of my questions are kind of involved in things that would be spoilers for the book. So <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to do that. We can talk about that later. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Can you come on in a couple of weeks when people have had a chance to, <laughs> to read the book? Um, well, let's let's move on then, so we don't give anything away. And you talked a little bit uh, the last time you were he- here about your new series, and it's a um, it involves it's a it's a gamer series, right? Is am I remembering that correctly? It is. I was actually I reread the first book. Well, I finished it this morning. I, I was going to say I reread it this morning, but I don't read quite that fast. Um, I I actually really like it, so I'm in a good place. <laughs> um, but it's about two people who meet 
uh, at a board game tournament that takes place in different cities over the course of a year, and they slowly fall, although they are competitors, um, they do slowly fall in love. The first book is going to be called She's Got Game, and that is scheduled to be released in November 2019. So you've got some, we've got some time there. I follow you on social media, and I, um, you've been editing lately, <laughs> according to Twitter, um, which would never lie to me, yes. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Is that what you've been editing? Is this first book? I've actually, I've been going back and forth. I have kind of a, a rough draft of the second book. And I'm because I've been blessed with uh, some time to work on these, um, I've been trying to do them together. So I can't make sure they're consistent, going back and forth, tweaking here and there. Um, I didn't do that before. And I wound up having to go back at the end. I'd get these comments from the editors, like, hey, did you know that this character was blue eyes in the other book? And I go, no, <laughs> but thank you for noticing. <laughs> so, yes. um, I'm trying to take care of that stuff now to lighten the load on the copy editors a, a bit. Um, and as you know, I'm having a baby in a few months, so I really want to get as much of the series done as possible before that happens, because I, I, I hear I'm going to be busy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, supposedly babies sleep. Yeah, I hear that sometimes they wake up and they want attention. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just so needy that way you so in terms of your writing process do you outline do you ha do you create any kind of like storyboards or anything to help keep those those you know like character eye color and plot lines and those things uh straight for yourself or how do you do that i don't outline i've tried outlining and it turns out that when i start writing i completely ignore everything that i had written so it, it winds up being not a productive use of my time. I think it's great for people that it works for, but I just don't operate that way. So I have a like a separate document where I'll, I'll make notes when I think of stuff that I want to happen later. So I always know where the story is going. I don't always know how to get there. It's bumpy getting there. Um, but I do, I try to put in character descriptions. For something like, like this, the first series where I have, like in the first book, I have a lot of characters. I had to actually just list them all out and type descriptions and just have that open when I was writing so I could refer back to it. Especially in the beginning when there's, you know, 12 people on the show that I'm introducing and half of them are gone pretty quickly, but I still need to know what they look like. I mean, for the, for Reality Wedding, a lot of them come back because, you know, we're bringing the old stars in. So I needed that. That's I could do a spreadsheet. A lot of people do. I keep telling myself to make one been on my to-do list for a while and the due date says August 1st 2017 so I'm starting to hit a point where I might need to admit to myself that it's not going to be happening <laughs> <laughs> it's a few it's months still there, though. The, yeah <laughs> every time I pull up my my app with to-dos it's there <laughs> a little reminder hey I haven't done this yet yeah well I mean everyone has to find the the method that works best for you them so maybe a spreadsheet isn't the, you know isn't the one isn't the thing that's going to work for you my notes get me pretty far. I still deviate sometimes. Every once in a while, I'll go back and read my notes after I finish. I go, oh, that's what I wanted to happen. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and do your characters like to change the story on you mid-writing mid process? They do sometimes, yeah. And it's not always the main characters. You know, a minor character will show up and do something completely unexpected that just changes the whole course. And I go, hmm, well, that's interesting. I just, I just kind of go with it, see what happens. You know, a lot of that comes out. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you're able to just go with it. It doesn't kind of like make you go, ah, I don't know what just happened. I feel like I might freak out a little bit if my characters just did a 180. As long as I can get back to the ending I wanted and as long as it makes sense for the story, it's fine. And sometimes you just get an idea in your head and you just have to write it out. And then you get to the end, it's like, oh, well, that was terrible. And that's fine. As is. As long as I got that out of the way so I can delete it, and go back to what's supposed to be there, what's going to work. And I, I saw that stuff in a spare file, too, because you never know when you're going to need a scene from a bad date. You just go in, pull up what you've already got, and see if you can make it work. And I would imagine that you could use a lot of that material that you've already written for the spinoffs, if you wanted to, or some of those novellas that you want that you could write about Justin and Jen. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I have I have a lot of random stuff that if if I wanted to do a Jen and Justin novella, I could put it together. Mm -hmm. There's just a bunch of bits and pieces here and there that I've got. 
interrupting one more time for our final break of the podcast. For those of you who have read the first two books, I wonder which characters you would like to see with their own spinoffs. If, you know, that were a possibility, if you could just say, hey, I want to see this character get a spinoff and poof, then the magical world of um, magical books, you could have whatever you wanted. So which characters would you love to see get their own book and which characters would make you say, "Mm, no, thank you. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back. But in the meantime, you are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Laura Heffernan. You were mentioning that you'd thought about maybe doing spinoffs. Um, do you have certain characters in mind for who you who could potentially, in theory, someday get a spinoff? I would love to do a book with Rachel. I don't know what I would do, um, but it, it would be interesting. She's always been one of my favorite characters even though she's not a main character, you know, I've always really liked her. Um, I did, I did think about doing a spinoff where uh, Danielle Dominic's ex-wife has her, her own dating show because she does have her dating show in the second book. So I was thinking about giving, actually look going into that more or giving her a different show, something similar, um, because that was a fun character to play around with. I really like most of them. So yeah, but, uh, my only my only request I don't know if it would be it would be fabulous or if it would be like um, a fabulously horrible train wreck a book about J Dog. <laughs> I don't know that I'd want to be in his head. No, him... <laughs> that would be. Do you think I could make a book? <laughs> Do you have those that many rhymes in you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I do. <laughs> I mean, he was a lot of fun to play with because he was just so obnoxious on every level. But for 200 pages, I might stab my eyes out. I don't know. <laughs> we don't want that. Please don't. Please don't stab your eyes out. So just avoid Joshua altogether. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so give us your website and tell uh, tell people where they can find you on social media. Uh, my website is www.lauraheffernan.com. A lot of people get my last name wrong, but it's H-E-F-F-E-R-N-A-N, not M-A-N. Um, and I am I am almost always on social media. Uh, <laughs> uh, Twitter, I'm at L-H underscore rights. Or on Facebook, I'm Laura Heffernan Books. And I believe it's also on Instagram and Pinterest, Laura Heffernan Books. I don't spend as much time on those. I probably should. Mm-hmm. And do you have, um, are you on Goodreads? Can people leave reviews, et cetera? Yes, all three of my books are on Goodreads. Um, I love reviews. I love comments. I love people who post questions. That's great too. All that stuff. I love talking to people. Perfect. So just as a reminder to you out there listening, authors need feedback, positive feedback, constructive feedback, and they love, they love those reviews. So, um, is there anything else? What else have we, you know, we can't give, we can't give too much of the book away, but is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you wanted to touch on today? Um, the one thing I want to say, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a book about reality TV. I don't watch reality TV. It doesn't matter. The books are designed to be accessible. Like, they, if you like fun, flirty, romantic comedies, that's what they are. They're, 
the re- reality show is almost like a character, but it's, it's largely a backdrop. It's not the whole book. So don't let that keep you away. Agreed, because I tend to not watch reality TV, but I've loved all three of these books. So I do think it works better to start at the beginning, uh, but it, I wrote them so that you don't have to. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to me. This interview will air on the 6th, which is when the book comes out, so that's perfect. Awesome. Good time to buy it. <laughs> that's right. Treat yourself to a really fun book, because winter apparently is never going to end. <laughs> that is correct. So thanks again, Laura. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. And I do once again want to thank Laura for coming back a second time to be on the podcast, for taking the time to speak to me about this conclusion to her trilogy, uh, the Reality Star Trilogy. This one is called Reality Wedding. The first two books of the trilogy are called America's Next Reality Star and Sweet Reality. So if you haven't read any of them, you should definitely check them out. It would be a fun, fun read. Three books. They are, as I said, they're funny. They are, um, they're sweet in places. They're snarky in places. They are just a good read to sit back, um, escape into a world that you, you can be glad that you aren't a part of unless that's what you want to do and you want to be on reality tv and then you can sit back and think of the ways that you would handle those situations i'm just going to read them and think thank goodness that i am not on reality television because i would be terrible at it thank you to laura once again i greatly appreciate her being my guest i greatly appreciate her writing these fun novels and i encourage you the book does come out today as we said in the interview march 6th so if you don't have it you should rush right out and get it if you haven't read any of them you can start with the third one but always more fun to start at the beginning and they're not long it, like i said they are quick to read because they're so much fun so check out the whole trilogy I hope you will join me again next time. Thank you, as always, for joining me this time. Next time, on Thursday's episode, I have another author interview, this time with author Yishan Lai, who's the author of Not a Self-Help Book, The Advent- the Misadventures of Marty Wu. And I had so much fun with this interview. I mean, my cheeks hurt afterwards. I was laughing so much. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed doing it. Please join me for that interview on Thursday. In the meantime, as always, you can find all of our podcasts and information about those podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And you can follow us on social media. I would love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And we have a blog, www.gsmcbookreview.blogspot.com. There will be an accompanying blog post with this episode. As always, all of those links are in the show description. And in the blog post, you will find links to Laura's social media and website. Thank you again for joining me. Join me again next time with my for my interview with author Yishan Lai. In the meantime, get out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program